Come apart from your business. Leave your stresses at the door. Come and reconnect with God. Remain in Him and grow. Grow closer, grow deeper. Grow and be fruitful. Come and glorify God. Amen. Good morning to you all, brothers and sisters. We are here today to hear the word of God and always to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ every Sunday. And we are gathered here just to impart what God has given us today through his word. May the good Lord open your heart, open your ears, so that you are able to receive the message that you are going to hear today. God bless you. Let us pray. We gather here, Lord, for you, the vine, to nourish us. May we, the branches, draw our strength from you and grow in harmony, unity, and love. May we find nourishment through our rootedness in the life teachings and love of our Christ. Receive the fruits of our worship and be glorified, Father. Eternal God, we come as one and we come together just to draw from the source of life-giving love, to reconnect with one another and with you, to listen to your word, to meet you in prayer and praise, to lean and grow as your faithful disciples in Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to call Brother Ben to come and read the word of God from John chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's a, it's a wonderful day to be uh, here with you, reading the Word of God. Uh, it's a um, great pleasure to be able to read, read this uh, Bible verse to you. It's one of my favourite ones, um, from John chapter 15, 1 to 10. I am the vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are clean because the word I have spoken to you remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are not like the branch. You are like the branches that are thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. Yeah, that's a really awesome verse. So um, can't wait to hear what Johnson has to talk about. And it's going to be awesome. Bring, bring open ears. Brother Johnson. Thank you so much, Brother Ben, for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, today I have decided to share with you on the theme, having the right connection. Having the right connection. Jesus knew that his physical presence with his precious disciples would soon end. He also knew, knew that these men would need a clear understanding of their position with God, as well as what expected of them. So he consciously filled their minds with pictures and ideas to help them survive the day to come. But these same lessons also provide vital resources for preparing future generations of disciples to grow in their faith. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's verse 5. I have to remember how often I am tempted to base my identity on shallow, temporal things. Don't I connect my identity with the neighborhood I live, 
in or the car I drive or my job or my friends or my family or my bank account. Sometimes I even connect my identity with my favorite soccer team. Okay, to say it, Manchester United. If they are winning, I'm top of the world. I'm a winner too. Not only that, but we also begin to identify ourselves with what we do. It's common to answer the question of who you are with what we do. I'm a lawyer. I'm studying economics. I've written a book. When our identity becomes synonymous with what we do, we no longer think like disciples of Jesus Christ. And every psychologist and sociologist who studies social media says that social media is having a tremendous impact on people's notions of identity today. Social media encourages us to link our identity with our appearance and the image we project. If you are walking, you always see young people holding their phones, taking selves. No character, no intellect, no substance, but image. Our identity is that of sons and daughters of God. That is our identity. There is a social media influencer who has about 300,000 followers on her various social media channels. Her name is Natalie Taylor. Back in February 2020, Taylor posted this beautiful, perfectly posted shots on Instagram of her vacation to Bali. After receiving lots of likes and shares and comments from her social media fans, Taylor revealed that she never actually went to Bali at all. She and a photographer had taken all these gorgeous, exotic photos at their local Ikea store. Taylor says that she set up the fake photo shoot deliberately to teach her fans to question the images they see on social media. And she said, sometimes people want to lie about who they are. It's not hard to do that today. It is easier than ever to become anyone you want to be these days. That's wonderful, but with great power comes great responsibility. Where do you find your identity? Because your identity, who or what you identify with, shapes your life. It impacts your values and choices and relationship. If your identity is rooted in being an athlete, a sports person, you are not going to sit on the couch and being watch Netflix or doing video games. What do you need to do? You are going to spend your spare time building your physical and mental endurance. If your identity is rooted in being a father, you are not going to ignore your children or spend all your paycheck on your own needs. You are going to pay close attention to your children's needs and budget wisely to provide for them. In our lesson for today, Jesus gives us our birth certificate. Our identity, and it's not a fake one. Jesus reveals the source of our identity, and it is out of this identity that we have find hope, strength, and the foundation of our lives. I am the vine, said Jesus, and you are the branches. That's our identity in Christ. Have you ever thought about how much hope is pegged in that little sentence? I am the vine and you are the branches. Jesus said in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. When you trust Christ, you become a branch in his vine. That is union. But he goes on to say in verse 5, He who abides in me and I in him be as much fruit. Now that is communion. Union is the basis of communion. So to abide in Christ is a 24 hour a day, 7 day a week, 52 day a week a year, intimate relationship with God. So that you become a fruit bearing branch. We find our identity in being connected with someone or something. Our identity is shaped by the, our connection to our parents, our family, our teachers, our coaches, our friends. Our church family, our community. When another person sees you, values you, and wants to be the best for you, that is what shapes you, identity. We find our identity in our connection to others. In today's lesson, Jesus gives the ultimate gift. He says, you are connected to me. You are not on your own. You are connected to me. And you are not just connected to me. You are now a part of my substance. You are not alone. Your life is not a random or meaningless. 
The divine nature, the wisdom, the life, the joy that flows through me now flows through you. If you stay connected to Christ, you have meaning and purpose for your life. If you stay that way. Jesus is divine. It is he that nourishes our hungry spirits. We seek in vain when we look for nourishment in other places. When we are disconnected from the source of life, the creator God, the God who claims us as his masterpiece, then we are tempted to find our identity in some poor, worthless substitute. There are some people who will seek what they need in their neighborhood bar. Some will seek it sitting in front of a television, set, staring at their smartphone hour after hour after hour. Others will look for it in art and philosophy. Some in bizarre personal indulgences. Or others will accept that marked Christ, however, are dead end. They are not going anywhere. It is not our outer circumstances that determine our inner happiness. Some people surrounded by every convenience and luxury while in inner deep despair. Others in most adverse circumstances arise above those circumstances and claim amazing victories. It all depends on who you are connected to. Who are you connected to? Isaiah 40 verse 31 but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. That's a relationship. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. It is he who links us to one another. We not only have connections in high places, we also have connections in low places and in, in, in places in between. We are connected to one another as branches linked to the vine of Christ. So we are connected to one another. That's why if you are a disciple, you are connected to other people outside of your, your, your environment. You need to connect yourself with other people. That is what it means. The business, we have been called into discipleship business so that we can connect ourselves with other people. A woman named Staffin Lux posted online about the members of a church and their love for a teenager boy who was undergoing treatment for a brain tumor. During the pandemic, no one could visit the boy because the cancer treatments suppress his immune system. But his church family was determined to show their love and support. So they organized a community drive-by. Hundreds of cars drove slowly past his house, honking their horns and flashing their headlights to let the young men know that his church members were praying for him. What a lovely story. We live in a world that can be awful lonely, whether you are at the top or at the bottom. We need to affirm and embrace the idea that we are a family with every believer in Jesus Christ in this world. Who could be lonely with such a family if we can connect with one another, if we can give a call to one another, if we can look for one another, we are linked to Christ, other people to become our people. Many of them also have connections in high places that makes us family. But there is one thing more to be said. He is the vine. We are the branches. It is that gives us the ability to bear fruit. What does it mean to bear fruit? It means that all our actions are motivated by and reflect the spirit and character of Jesus Christ. Being food means letting the spirit of Jesus inspire all our actions. Not just our actions in church, but wherever we are. But our actions on the job, on the sports field, at school, and out with friends, and on social media. And when we are all alone, nobody is looking. Bearing food is what life is all about. When nobody is looking. Jesus says, I am the true vine. Now a vine is springing forth out of little bars that are called shoots. First of all, it is just foliage, just fragile green shoot. Then there's the flower, which is the bloom ready to mature. But then there is the fruit. Jesus goes on to say in verse 1, the father is the vine dresser. The only thing that the vine dresser is interested in and looking for is fruit. He doesn't look for anything. He's looking for fruit. He is not concerned about the foliage or the flower, but the fruit. God is not impressed with the appearance of the foliage or the color of the flower. He is strictly an inspector for fruit. Fruit inspector. Our Heavenly Father wants to see every branch bearing the fruit of Jesus. 
the true vine. Jesus goes on to say in verse 2, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. He takes away. Now a vine dresser prunes in two ways. First, he cuts away fruitless branches that might be sucking up the, uh, the sap that ought to be going to the fruit branches. Because if the sap is wasted, the vine bears less fruit. Then he cuts away shoots from the fruitful branches so that all the sap is concentrated on enabling that branch to bear fruit. Now God's favorite pruning knife is his word. In Hebrews 4 verse 12 it tells us, it is sharper than two-edged sword. It is this that God used to cut the branch and to clean the branch. In fact, the word for prune in verse 2 is the same word used for clean in verse 3. So you see, as you read God's word, God cuts away the bed so it doesn't get in the way of the good. Then God cuts the good so that it doesn't get in the way of the best. Now, sometimes we refuse to listen to the word of God. And so bring affliction into our life to make us more responsive to this word. Charles Pagan said, The word is often the knife with which the great husbandman men prunes the vine. And brothers and sisters, if we are more willing to feel the edge of the word and to let it cut away even something that may be very dear to us, we should need so much pruning by affliction. It is because that first knife does not always produce the desired result. That another sharp tool is used by which we are effectually pruned. And we find ourselves in those situations where we need pruning. Many trials, troubles, tribulations are simply pruning shears in the hands of the divine vine dresser that he uses to cut away dead wood, fruitless branches, sub sucking shoots, that we might bear more fruit and much fruit. Now, does the branch bear fruit? By trying, no. By working, no. By straining, no. The branch bears fruit simply by abiding. Jesus said in verse 1, He who abides in me and I in him bears my fruit. So the word abide is used ten times in the first ten verses. And is truly the key that unlocks the door to the joyous, victorious Christian life. But what does it mean to abide? Why is abiding so important? When you put a tea bag in a cup of hot water, something amazing happens to that water. As the tea bag remains or abides in the water, it begins to color the water and flavor that water until the water begins to take on the color and the taste of the tea bag. Now, the longer the bag abides in the water, the stronger the color and the taste of the tea. So that is exactly what happens when you abide in Christ and abides in you. The longer you abide in Christ, the deeper you go with Christ, the more you influence, the more the influence of Jesus Christ will pervade your life. So that you begin to reflect his nature and his character. It's no longer you who live, but Christ lives in you. That is what happens in your life. Your life just reflects who Jesus Christ is. If, you, if your life lives with Christ, people are able to see Christ in you. You don't even need to tell people that you are a Christian. They are able to see Christ in you. Now understand the branch does not produce the fruit. It only bears the fruit. It is the vine that produces the fruit. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 4. The branch can produce leaves, but only the vine can produce fruit. And that is true. You see, without the vine, the strongest branch is the whole place as the weakest branch. The most beautiful branch is useless as the ugliest branch. The branch is as worthless as the worst branch. Because there is no crime. That's why Jesus went on to say, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him be as much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. In effect, what Jesus says, I am the socket. You are the plug. <laughs> now as you all know, without the socket, the plug can do absolutely nothing. That is what Jesus is saying. What does it mean to abide in Christ? Well, the Lord Jesus tells us right here in this passage, abiding means, first of all, studying the word of God. 
If you abide in me and my ways abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and shall be done. If you abide in my word, you are studying the word of God. That's why he found us even trying to say, how can we set Bible study groups? Because you need to abide in the word of God. The word of God is in you. I have kept my word in my heart so that I will not sin against you. That's what you are saying. When the child of God looks into the word of God and he sees the son of God, he is changed by the spirit of God. Into the image of God by the grace of God from the glory of God. That is what abiding is all about. But abiding also means doing the work of God. Jesus said, you will abide in me and I in me be as much fruit. We have already learned that is what God is concerned about. He is in the fruit bearing business. That is his work. That is what he desires. God desires to see you bearing fruit. Because you are a disciple of Christ. Your aim is to bring someone, to attract someone to God. To bring someone to Christ. That is the aim of Jesus Christ. Now a branch without a vine is first of all lifeless. Then because it is lifeless, it is fruitless. And because it is fruitless, it is therefore useless. It was interesting to learn that the dead branch from a grape vine is absolutely useless. It cannot be used to make a piece of furniture or a utensil of any kind. It's useless. How can you tell whether or not a branch is through a believer? Because a branch, a, a branch is about believers. How can you tell whether or not a branch is a truly believer? Well, the test is fruitless. No fruit. The Lord Jesus said in one of the most sombre warnings in all the, of the Bible, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorns, bushes, or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot be a bad fruit, nor can a bad tree be a good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Matthew 7, verse 16, 20. You know them by their fruits. So you see, a fruitless branch is not a failed Christian, but a false Christian. <laughs> Mark it down. The reality of faith is determined by the quality of fruit. No fruit, no faith. It is not the label on the outside that counts. Whether you are a Baptist, you are a Methodist, a Presbyterian, a United, Roman Catholic, but rather the life on the inside is what matters. What is inside you? The question is, do you have the right connection? It's not the right church. It's the right connection you are having. That is what is important. Do you have the right connection? Do you have the Lord in your heart? Do you show the Lord in your life? Jesus is the true vine. The question is, are you a true branch? Because you are, you will bear much fruit. Because if you are, if you are a true branch, you bear much fruit. That is the only reason we see. And when we stay connected to Jesus, when we cultivate a daily relationship with him, his spirit and values will fill our minds and hearts. And our actions will start to change to reflect his actions. Imagine how much your life could change if you find your identity in your connection to Jesus. And how many lives could you impact if your life consistently and authentically reflected the spirit of Jesus? Don't settle for mediocre life. Don't settle for that. Don't spend your time, energy, on this chase, chasing a meaningless lifestyle, running after the mirage. Cultivate a relationship with Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and you'll find the true purpose of fruitful life that reflects Jesus' spirit. Are you connected? Are you connected to Jesus Christ? Having the right connection. That's what I said at the moment. May God bless you. May God help you to find the right connection. In his name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for everything that you do us. We thank you that you are God and nothing is impossible with you. We thank you that you, you have shown us something in our lives so that we are connected to you. Father, we continue to pray for one another. We continue to pray for others. 
We continue to intercede for those in difficult situations. God of comfort. As India faces the ravages of coronavirus, we pray for some relief for their suffering. May those in this world who have an excess of medicine and oxygen be moved to generosity. And may those who have faced great anguish find some measure of comfort. Even as our situation with the various virus changes, here we are mindful of the main families across the country who are still trying to come in terms with the death of loved ones. We pray for everyone struggling with the pain of loss. Bring solace to them. Bring people who can offer ways and actions that soothe and help those who grieve to find small shoes of hope for the future. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Because we are connected to one another. We are but one world which falls under you. So we continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in India. Be with us, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Normally, after hearing the word of God, we always encourage everyone who listens to this word just to show a gesture of thanking, thankfulness. Just say, thank you, Lord. Just for you to hear this word, you need to thank God. Because some people are unable to be able to hear this word because of other things that has happened to their life. So it's time for us to offer our offerings, to give our offerings. Let us pray for our offerings. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our offerings. We thank you that you continue to minister to us. Blessed is the hand that giveth than the one that receiveth. Yes, it is only through you that we are able to show that we are really thankful. We are thankful for everything that you have done to us. We are thankful that we are still connected to you. Thank you, Lord. Bless every one of us through our giving. In Jesus' name, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all.